This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. It's Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in. Let's do it. You're about to listen to the art of wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's also a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds and souls, the hearts and lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I'm a bearded individual. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler. We are sitting here live in the studio. Apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before we go any further, this is a fan supported and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. Give it to you free of charge every single Thursday on iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend via social media or head on over to coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com. T shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, all that fun. Great ways to support the show. Coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com. All right, the guest this week is uh, my good friend, Rocky Azucar Romero. Rocky, just off a flight, finally back home in Los Angeles for himself from the big Wrestle Kingdom 9 show, Tokyo, Japan. Happy to have on Rocky. Why am I having Rocky on? Well, A, because he's amazing. B, he's been around wrestling for so long. C, uh, handsome man, just a real handsome man. And I say that in the most heterosexual way that I possibly can. But if you're a woman and you're not in love with Rocky, Romero, there's something wrong with you. Charming individual. And also, he is a part of New Japan Wrestling on American television, Access TV. I reached out to Access TV and I asked them for their information to help promote the show. They couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered, yet I'm still here because it's still important that uh, I promote New Japan on Access TV. Rocky and I, we talk all about New Japan, the resurgence of it, where he's been, how long he started for them. He's wrestled for them and with that system for a long time now. A man who's made his way around Japan, a living in Japan for so many years now. Every Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central, they're going to be on Access TV. I don't know if you get it. I went over to Cliff Compton's house once, and uh, he was watching it. He enjoys the concert series on Access TV. Also, Tom Green has a show on Access TV, and I think there's a Live at Gotham. I remember there was a Live at Gotham show on Comedy Central, which was amazing, which is where I learned about a lot of uh, my favorite stand-up comedians. And then uh, I don't know if this one is as good. I didn't have a lot to talk about. I I was in St. Louis this past week. That was about it. I did a very fun show. I did a seminar. But I kind of wanted to get to the idea of this New Japan show coming on American television because I'm going to be honest with you, for so long, you know, Conan uh, once said to me and to many people that, of course, he watches the wrestling product on television. It's his job. That's what he does for a living. He has to stay up to date. Why wouldn't he watch the wrestling promotions on television, whether it was WWE, TNA, ROH, I mean, it's no secret that I'm immersed in the world of professional wrestling. It's what I do for a living. I did a tour of Pro Wrestling Noah last October, and I took Monday Night Raw off of my DVR because I didn't want it to build up. By the way, I'm, it's it's only a matter of time before I get rid of Comcast and DVR, I, you, right? I got to be. It's, it must be so. I have an Apple TV. I might as well just go straight Hulu, Netflix, HBO Go, that kind of stuff. There's no point in me having Comcast. I think it's up to like 140 bucks a month now. For what? 100 cable channels? Ugh, gross. So I took it off the DVR, and I never had the urge to really put it back on. And I'm not watching Monday Night Raw every single week. I'm not watching SmackDown every week. I don't think I was ever watching SmackDown. I don't think I have sci-fi. Pay 140 bucks. I don't get the fucking sci-fi channel. And uh, I've kind of weaned myself off of WWE. Probably mainly because after Punk and then Brian was off TV, and of course I said the kind of deep push of uh, my friend Cesaro in a less fun role. It's not as fun for me to watch. The point is, is that there is alternatives. And forever it was the speech of alternatives in the independent scene, going to a local show, going to see a live show, and I still think that's the best way to take in wrestling. But now, you know, with the Lucha Underground show on El Rey, and now the New Japan show on Access, and it's not like these are some VCR-looking cable access show, which would be fine. Obviously, my love of cable access through the Chris Gethard show always shows, but these are real productions with other people's ideas. Yeah, there's a little bit of WWE rubbing off on everyone. It has to be. It's the monopoly. It's the norm. But slowly but surely, all these people will find their own niche. 
They'll find their own way to tell their own stories. It won't be a carbon copy of WWE. And it's exciting that these real shows are starting to come to our television. And there's going to be crazy, crazy other platforms in the future. I'm excited for someone who just does a really good YouTube show or a real good Hulu show or a real good Amazon show. But signs, they're coming. And it's exciting. And it starts with New Japan on Access. And it starts with a conversation with one of those wrestlers, Rocky Romero. Song of the Week this week is brought to you by Bombas Socks. Athletic Leisure Socks. That's right. Go to bombas.com slash cult and get a free pair of socks or 20% off. The choice is yours, guys. Bombas, well, they had a choice, too. It's like, hey, should I do great things for mankind or should I not? And uh, they went with, yes, do great things. Because for each sock bought, they're going to donate a pair. That's right. Since launching in 2013... Bombas has donated over 150,000 socks. Yeah, Bombas are a sponsor, but it's like, I feel great telling you about them, and I hope you feel great about wearing their socks. On top of all of the goodness, great socks. They sent me a bunch. I wear them all the time. They're comfortable. They fit well. They don't slip. They last. They got a honeycomb style that helps for strength, and they also have a cushion blister tab on the ankle. Go to bombas.com slash colt and get yourself a pair, which automatically helps give someone else in need a pair. Great people doing great things with great socks. B-O-M-B-A-S. Dot com slash cult. All right, for the song this week, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm smiling just knowing what I'm about to say. Rocky and I, we talk a little bit about him being there when John Cena showed up to, to learn how to wrestle. And uh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to go out and say it that uh, this album... This album was pretty good, if not good, actual good. It's easy to it's easy to mock John Cena, very easy. But uh, I thought this was the best time in his career. I enjoyed when he put out this uh, this rap album. I thought it was uh, I thought it was on point. This is John Cena with Bumpy Knuckles. I'm a bad bad man. Enjoy it. We'll be back with Rocky Romero. Why am I chuckling the whole time I'm pitching to a John Cena rap song? I don't know. Enjoy. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Throw your motherfucking hands in the air, wave them around like you just don't care. Rocky, um, you can't do the, you can't do that basic line there, that generic one, two, if you're gonna start throwing down. <laughs> I mean, listen, for for a basic rap superstar like myself, maybe, right? Maybe I'll say throw your hands in the air like you don't care. I'm the hype man though. Maybe give me <laughs> hip hop hooray ho. <laughs> You're just a hype man? I'm just a hype man. No, you're not. You're a producer extraordinaire. Yeah. What do you mean by hype man? I la- the hype man is, has all the fun, though. Hold on. But you're in the business. Are you in the business? I don't know. All I know is <laughs> I haven't seen you in fucking eight years or whatever. And then all of a sudden I come back and like Machine Gun's like, oh, yeah, Rocky's got a studio and he's got this and he's got that and he's doing all this. He's basically in the in the music. He's more in the music industry now, I would say, than he is in the wrestling industry. Like he's, uh, I wouldn't go that far. He's crossing paths. Yeah, I'm definitely in a, in a lot more industries than I need to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I should just be focusing on the one that actually pays me. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> the, because, okay, so I if we scratch the surface on a little bit of comedy, or a little bit of comedy, a little bit of this, the, whole, the idea of being in more industries than you are is comedy in itself, but right. uh, wrestling, obviously, yeah. music, and then there's other industries? Uh, yeah, I've entered into the acting world as well. well that doesn't count. Uh, yeah, that doesn't count? You're in the entertainment. Is there anything outside of the entertainment genre? No. Okay, there's nothing no. weird. No. Is there more than acting? <laughs> no, no, oh. no, not right now. Well, what's the acting industry? The acting, I mean... Uh, Just being an L.A. guy? 
being an L.A. guy, I and finally... And being a fucking handsome motherfucker. I finally <laughs> gave in to, you know, my good looks and decided, <laughs> like, I'll accept it and, uh, you know, I won't be a tough guy. I'll actually try to go out for, like, some acting gigs and stuff like that. So, um, actually, I just went on, uh, I had a second audition for a NBC pilot. Ooh. The lead. Oh, and you're gonna love this. It's it, the it's called telenovela. Well, can a, I can I say something? Go ahead. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Why not? Come on. <laughs> not so out of my league. <laughs> what are you saying? You're the, listen, a guy who's never like yeah, we get it. You've been in wrestling, you've acted, but like on camera, and then all of a sudden NBC is giving you a lead in a pilot. Like, well, I or maybe there's the a chance. Like, uh, eh, that's not happening. Uh, stop it. Yeah. You stop it. You try out for the fourth fucking role. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the fourth leading guy. Well, hopefully that'll lead to like the fourth or fifth leading guy. I'm okay with that. Right. You okay. Know, so I don't you, care. you tell you know, him you're getting, so you're, <laughs> you're trying to get the lead of a show. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, but that's how it is sometimes too. I mean, I don't think I'll get the lead because the, the experience factor, but I mean, I have been studying for the last two years. Yeah. Seriously. So Taking classes out classes, here, classes, yeah, improv, everything. Really? Yeah. What yeah. are you What are you doing that I don't know? That nobody knows. Do people know? No, nope, not a lot of people know. So what do you? What's, I keep it on the low level. Yeah, this yeah. is smart. Keep, this is very low. No one, no one will hear this. <laughs> nobody will hear this. All right. um, <laughs> improv, where? What? Doing what? Uh, scene yeah. study? Yes, and what are we yeah, doing? Yeah, I've been doing scene study. I've been doing. Uh, I've been taking uh, acting classes like. Two or three times a week for the last two years. Yeah. Any, any between tours, obviously. And so you're in LA for those of you who don't know. Yes. And any famos that are that are in and out of these classes that like were you like, hey, that's the guy from uh, American Pie um, reunion. The, so my the, the coach that I go to right now, he uh, he actually has uh, Pedro from uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Mm-hmm. That's like his one of his students that's right there. his number that's his one <laughs> yeah that's one of them yeah. oh, so one day <laughs> you're like aspiring to be pedro from the folio dynamite you never know yeah you, know? you never well, know he, they all came from somewhere exactly and then the music industry the music industry uh so yeah i'm working with uh, i got a partner his name is uh the ashoka mm-hmm. I, I believe you know him mm-hmm. and uh yeah well, sanjay dutt knows him. sanjay dutt he's of, him. of indian descent right he's of indian descent he's an indian brother and uh yeah, you know, uh, we work on stuff. We actually we submitted two songs recently for Dr. Dre's new album. So I mean, you never know. Just hold on, <laughs> but the, the, you, the way you yeah, I don't said know it, if they'll use them. The obviously. way you said it, you were like, "Yeah, this." I feel you're in a town and a re- an industry like professional wrestling that nev- nothing ever happens for anyone, right right, right? right. And you like the way you said it, you were like, "Yeah, this might happen." Eh, you never know. Come on. <laughs> I'm a dreamer. You yeah, really are. Me dream. Your cup is so <laughs> half full. Mine is so half empty. It's uh, it's ridiculous. It's so true. Maybe I mean better for you though. You're, that's amazing. It uh, says a lot about both of us. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two complete ends of the spectrum. Totally. Right? Yeah. No, but I'm having fun, man. I'm. Uh, you know. Uh, ever since I got back from Mexico uh, a couple years ago, and that actually when I came on the show last mm-hmm. that was like what four years ago or so i i mean so you that one's been taken off the itunes list because oh, yeah. i took the, the top like the first 35 because i had the people that were coming new to the show i didn't want them to hear those shows as their first entryway into my show gotcha so i kind of took it off and i put it on the premium spot and you were i think you were the either the fifth or sixth one i ever did when wow. i was like uh Hey Rocky, I'm like <laughs> to my my good enough friends who wouldn't judge me for any whatever I'm doing. Just be like, just go with this, and you're like, yeah, yeah, of course, whatever. <laughs> and so yeah, you were like five or six, but uh, okay, okay. So you were that was 2010 for sure. That was 2010, summer so, yeah. of 2010. Yeah, so I just came back from uh, from living in Mexico for three years, and uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if it was Mexico that made me crazy or uh, just I decided to just you know just take chances and go for it, you know, and. Uh, and uh, so I started doing the music. I started uh, producing beats, and then uh, and then things just kind of happened. I met you know other people. You know you start connecting with people and uh, and doing music for them and working on projects. So yeah, we're working on. Uh, I said the Ashoka. We're working on his album right now. I think I've written like maybe four tracks on there or something. But okay. But I'm always curious. Like you just said, hey, I'm going to start doing it. You just start doing it? Or do you You usually have to have, like, I guess the acting classes I get going to people. But mm-hmm. just like wrestling, you know, uh, if you want to 
put it to wrestling like you can't there's so many people who just try to like i guess backyard wrestle or whatever it's right. like no you have to be introduced into the world and taken up under uh a wing right of some sort right no i mean for for the music stuff i mean not like i've always been into music because like i was in choir for most of like yeah you, there's something you know, i was in choir when i was young wow. and shit like that so so uh and then I, when I got into wrestling, it was just all wrestling all the time. You know, the eat, sleep, and shit fucking wrestling, you know? So, so you don't even breathe. I don't even just, breathe. Just shit. Yeah. I don't have time for it because sure. it's just so much wrestling. Well, all the shitting of the wrestling. Right. <laughs> and then I got into it young. You know, I was like 16 or something. So I, I, I missed all the other stuff to be like, I guess, artsy or, or mm-hmm. like, you know, find out other things about myself besides outside of wrestling. So then I, uh, I picked up a laptop. I, I bought myself... Uh, uh, keyboard and I just started there you know and then I started studying music and you know musical theory and stuff like that myself do you know how, did you know how to play a keyboard no so you just grabbed a keyboard just grabbed a keyboard I, I bought some books and I uh, you know and I you know I did some YouTube do you think you know <laughs> no that's nothing to laugh at because yeah. that's honestly the best way to do anything <laughs> yeah. is just get something and then just YouTube stuff <laughs> that's what I do that's there's like those girls that are like the dancer you, you you know you see these like girls that are like unbelievable dancers and they're like where'd you learn it I was like I just watched YouTube tutorials <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm a god of the dance world <laughs> so at least yeah. that's what I'm watching yeah yeah, yeah no I mean YouTube's amazing. You can find anything on there. Like, if you have a question about anything, I just throw it up in there, and you know, and you know, figure out tempos and you know, signatures and blah blah blah. You know, so why the keyboard? Uh, just because it was the most versatile. Okay. You know, and then uh, and then so I use like a, a music making program called uh, Fruity Loops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that was just it was easy because you know with that you can you know you can program any sound and you can yeah. you know you can play with it. So. Say, that, that, so that this is what this is how this podcast works. Fruity Loops uh, makes me think of John Cena, right? <laughs> uh, not because like he's a well whatever, but like right Fruit Loops that was yeah. the thing he was doing with the yeah. Rock. Yeah. And then I remember you were a UPW guy, like born and born and raised. Yeah. Uh, were you around for John Cena? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He was the prototype. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was there. Um, I was there when he, I remember the first time he he basically came in and started training. I remember when he, uh, his first match with big appearance when the prototype debuted. Uh, Let's hear this stuff. Jeez. I mean. It's all such a blur a little bit, you know, I mean, so long ago. Is that something like as you were watching it, you were, were you like. So did they make a big deal of the idea that the prototype was debuting? Yeah. Because yeah. because there was that reality show? Is that right? Uh, I don't know if it was because or of the is, reality show. Or just yeah, Rick was show. like, I found the guy. Rick, Rick Bassman. Rick, yeah. Ba- Bassman, though. He, you know, the thing about Bassman, though, is he had a, a new guy every week, you right. know, basically, that he would find. And he would be like, this is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy. Can you so, name some of those? Like. I guess, uh, like, I know, like, the Turkais of the world or whatever. Yeah, Turkais. But, like, just characters. Like, there was this one dude who was a, a dude. God, it was, uh, there was so many of them. Half the time, I didn't even know their names because they were kind of getting shuffled through so fast. You know, like, every time we'd have a big show, it'd be like, this is the dude. I don't know. There was, like, uh, Basil was one of them. I mean, he, he, I think he ended up signing development. I don't even remember. Joe uh, Millionaire? Joe Millionaire was there. He right. was, yeah, he was there for a while. Ethan was that what his name? Ethan I don't said, know. Yeah, Joe Millionaire was there for a while. Uh, you know, John Cena, obviously. Um, Football players, so models, right? Just everyone. So many guys. Okay, so prototype. Was- I think he just walked around, and then like every big guy that he saw, he said, "Hey, do you you know you want? I can make you rich. I can you know come join my you know my school and." and and you know, I'll make you rich, and you'll become a big famous right. wrestler. Basically, you know. Was Cena? A, I can make you rich, guy. Do you think? Uh, because I get that he but, he liked it as a kid. Yeah, he he liked it as a kid. So he obviously he looked at it differently than the rest of those guys, you know. And he was actually the the one guy that used to go to all the practices and stuff, and just want to get better. Mm. And uh, the rest of the guys were just like you know they'd go to practice here and there. And then, you know, he, the next thing you know, they were wrestling on the shows, you know. They were they, just waiting for their million dollars. Exactly. Check. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it was just going to be that easy. You All know? right. So. Well, some people still think it's that way. For some people, it is that easy. Are, yeah, fuck. <laughs> There's a few out there. So. Are you guys, this, you're not the, he's so, he must be a couple years older than you. So you were, th- yeah. I mean, you were a teenager when he showed up, right? Yeah, I, was, I must have been 18. Okay. At that time in UPW. Um, 
So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how old he is. He's thirty mm-hmm. something, right? So it's something like that. Yeah. All right. A few years old, but he was Jack, dude. He was huge. I'm not doubting that. <laughs> oh, really? What if Crazy, I was? What if? What if dude. I was like, wait, get out! No, get out of here. That's crazy. I mean, wow, he was he was he was big. He's a freak for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he was probably as big as Batista was back in the day. Fuck, remember yeah. how big Batista was back yeah. in the day? So. Leviathan, yeah, was he? In, no, he wasn't UP. He was, did he ship him out? No, nah, he was Ohio Valley. You were part of the UPW guys, and this goes back to I don't remember anything we talked about in the first episode. I assume nothing. the same, yeah, nothing. Some maybe a little bit about Mexico. I was kind of intrigued by, but you were a part of. Uh, I always think it's fun with like the Cincinnati guys and the Louisville guys who are around the developmental territory, uh, who weren't signed. So you were. UPW maybe wasn't a developmental territory, but there was started, yeah. But everyone was getting <laughs> signed, right? Yeah. And yeah. like basically it was a place to get a contract. Right. So are you were you thinking like I was gonna get a contract or if I stick around here, I'm gonna be a big WWF star or I never thought that because uh I never WWF was never my like immediate goal. Like it was kinda always in the back of my mind, like but that's like I always thought that, that was somewhere that I would end up at the end of my career. Why do you think that? Uh, and because we have a mutual friend who once told me the same thing, uh, Kevin uh, Quinn, mm-hmm. who once was like, "That's what, actually said the same thing to me yeah. once." He was like, "Back in the day, man, like all the guys, they'd just be like, you do your whole run, and then when you're ready to kind of write, you know, retire, you do your last five or, or seven at WWF." And I was like, "Oh yeah, maybe that's what I'll do." <laughs> <laughs> actually, I think you told me that too. I might have stole that from him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, but I actually did because, like, uh, you know. I, I grew I grew up, you know, like really idolizing like Guerrero and Benoit. And then that's what those guys did. I really wanted to to travel to Japan and go to Mexico and do all that stuff in Europe and then go to WWF like with like, a, you know, this great resume because I knew that I was smaller than everybody else, too. You know, right. Like I like really I when I got into wrestling, I just wanted to be a wrestler. You know, I didn't really think about like, damn, I want to go to WWF. I actually wanted to go to ECW. That was like the big thing, you know, for me. So, uh, and the best is like when you're that age, <laughs> you're like thinking your scenarios. You're like, oh, I got Heyman asking me. And I'm like, sorry, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with Heyman over here. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, totally. like totally. in your I mind. Thought, I thought that like WCW obviously would be interested in me, right? right. And then, and then I would, but I would just end up, you know, signing with ECW yeah. to keep it real. Dream scenarios, <laughs> like fantasy, <laughs> fantasy booking for my life. <laughs> uh, sorry, you know, I'm going to have to. I just, I see myself walking out in that bingo hall. And like, you don't know, like, at least I didn't know that uh, Louis Spicoli was getting 200 bucks a, a day, right, uh, right, you know, right, and right. fucking uh, Quang was right. making six mil or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's exactly. all the same, right? It's just it's, being it's a wrestler. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I, I knew that I was smaller than everybody. And I knew that that was going to be, obviously, it, it was going to be something that I was going to cha- have, have as a challenge. So I figured, oh, fuck it. Well, I'll just, um, my goal is to travel the world, build up that resume like Benoit and those guys did because they were the smaller guys on the roster. And then I'll fucking well, ben, see what well, happens. Well, Benoit, Benoit <laughs> built up a different resume <laughs> yeah, for himself. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you want to build that resume yeah, yeah, specifically. Not, not, yeah, okay. Let's stick to Guerrero. <laughs> yeah. Blanco, those guys. Kind of right. Yeah. I, I find, see, I guess it's weird. And there's like a, I wonder, you know, I guess if generations have passed, will be like, I want to. Uh, you know, I want to build up that uh, Fergal, Rocky, machine gun resume right, or something. Right, right. And but you know, you're a lot of guys is right, Malenko, uh, Guerrero, Guerrero, and Malen- and Malenko, Guerrero, and Benoit. Right. And you and I think we talked about this one, but you basically took um, Guerrero's spot as Black Tiger. We can say that, right? Yep. Is yep. that uh, that's heard of? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I I don't know like how much the casual fan would even know what black tiger is right or like the idea that you were the next black tiger so the quick rundown would be like in japan uh you know new japan pro wrestling there's a very famous character called tiger mask so and he's basically like spider-man i guess but he's he's a wrestler and you know from the 80s it was like he was huge he was the biggest star in all of Japanese wrestling. And I would say to a casual fan, they would maybe, like, in passing, heard of, like, Tiger Man, Tiger Man? Tiger Mask, Dynamite Kid. <laughs> right, right, right. And that was, like, the famous match, and it was brought to the Garden. You can go on YouTube and watch exactly. that Garden match, which was about six minutes long, maybe. Yeah. 
right? Yeah, but they're, the, all those matches are just incredible. Yeah, they're and, so crazy. But they're the ones in Japan are, are yeah. unbelievable. And uh, so yeah, so his his venom, I would say, if we're gonna stick to the Spider Man thing, is is Black Tiger. So it's just like the evil version of Tiger Mask. Um, and the first one was Rollerball Rocco. You know who's who's been on this very show? Really? Yeah, yeah he's amazing. You know. And uh, the second one was Eddie. The third one was uh, Silver King, but we don't really count him. (laughs) See, I think we talked about Silver King, but Silver King was the fucking man in WCW. Yeah, he actually was awesome. He was like the one I liked out of all of those guys. And I guess that sounds kind of racist. I like Dandy, though, too. It sounds kind of racist when I say the one I liked, because you know what I'm talking about. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Uh, You liked El Dandy, why? Because of the mustache? The mustache and the hair were just awesome. Right, but I felt felt the, the wrestling... As the uninformed, good, smart yeah. nor- dork that I was, I was like, uh, Silver King's obviously the best wrestler right. out of all these guys. <laughs> and Super Callow does that fucking cool thing to the outside yeah. that man, he's good too. Yeah, you know? Silver King though, he he would take everybody's shit really good though. Like he would do like crazy like reverse Frankenstein. Well, that was the, the one, the Mysterio all. reverse yeah, Frankenstein. Yeah, I think that, is how yeah. I fell in love with Silver King. So he was the third Black Tiger. He was the third, and then I was the fourth. Yeah. So yeah. And then sadly, not sadly. Um, I forgot the dude's name, but it was, uh, I did a tour with him in zero one. He was kind of like, um, uh, Takaiwa, Takaiwa, Takaiwa. Yeah. yeah. He's, he like, it, it's meant to be out an outsider's position. Right. What happened? They just gave it to it. They didn't, they were sick of it. I think that they didn't have anything for him and they kind of were stuck having to use him. So they just gave him a gimmick. How do you say creative has nothing for you in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> in Japanese. <laughs> And uh, so they gave him Black Tiger, thinking that maybe that'll help. Mm. But then, I guess his matches were so shitty that they just Jesus. And it went back to you. Kind of took it back again, right? Um, did I take it back after that? Have they retired the idea of like the best Gaijin wrestlers will be a Black Tiger? Yeah, I think it now. I think it's now more reserved for just like as a complete gimmick, Mm. you know. So like the the last one was going to be Nozawa, but then Nozawa got into all that trouble. Sure did. You know, yeah. so so then he, uh so then that was the end of that, you know. And that, and it could be any one of those times that Nozawa got into trouble. Right, which were a plethora of <laughs> right. yeah. Might have been when he stole that taxi cab, it might have been, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um so you're in Japan now, basically full time, and, and when I think about it, I think it's crazy. I don't know how I don't know if you look back and think about it how crazy it is, but a five foot seven um uh, Cuban? What are you? Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Yeah. I play a Cuban on TV. Like, yeah. uh, you know, has been, this guy has been has like you have like a ten plus year, yeah, like long standing Japanese resume. Yeah, yeah. I think I've first time I went to New Japan was two thousand and two, October two thousand two. So yeah, twelve years. And I mean, I I the way I thought of it in my mind was like I. I mean, I go to Noah a lot. Mm-hmm. Like maybe I'm a, I'm friendly with a couple of the guys in the office. Like you know, like I or I'll Facebook the person that books me for the shows. But that's right. about it. Right. But like, I was thinking how you have like probably like real friends yeah. in, in the in this office that you've made relationships. Right. 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 No, and and it's funny too is like uh, I have friends that are not in the wrestling business there in Japan. In Japan, you know, I mean, like that's that's how crazy it is and how much time that I've spent there in the last 12 years. So like I, I, you know, it's an extended part of my life here, you know, the, then, you know, outside of America, it's definitely like an extension of that, you know, it's extended part of my life that, that I, that I visit every couple of weeks or every month or whatever. And then I go and I meet up with, you know, my friends <laughs> right. over there. And do you feel you have a, a, a group, like I, I have a better grasp of the, of the country and the, and the culture than, than most because I've been there seven or eight times or whatever. Right. right. Um, how is how do you feel your grasp on on everything is? Good. I I think I I uh, does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I definitely know the culture. I feel like do, when now. you go, do you still kind of feel like an outsider, or does it feel like ah, I know this place well? No, I don't really feel like an uh, like an outsider at all. You know. I uh, I've, I'm very comfortable there. I'm very comfortable get like getting around. No problem. No problem. No problem. Like you can say, hey, meet me at blah blah. You know, Shibuya. Shibuya. You know, and that that one's an easy one. But oh, I mean, sorry. it could be it could be anywhere, and uh, and I'd be like, okay, cool, and I could figure it out. No problem, and you know, be there on time without getting too lost. Every once in a while, you know, but uh, 
Yeah, I can, I can, and I, I the only hard thing is like ordering food sometimes when uh, there's no pictures on the menu, right? And it's all in Japanese. Can you read I can't any read of that? kanji? Yeah, I can. you can read kanji. No, I can't. I can't. Oh, okay. I can't. No, because of laziness. It's got to be laziness. Laziness. Yeah, it has to, twelve years going. Yeah. It has to just be like. I'm probably not gonna be going here next year, so I'll just stop. <laughs> and this was, and then just, twelve years later. Yeah, you know, like I, I picked up like wor- like a lot of words from ju- and not even studying, just from listening and talking to people and stuff like that, and, and asking some questions. But just the, the kanji's hard because they're characters. There's like a million of them. Sure, there's like a, a Flintstones character. There's a Pac-Man character. <laughs> like for those of you who don't know, right. Right, that's that's just a uh, cartoon characters, yeah. and that's how they read it. Or anime, I should say. It's Pokemon. It's actually. anime. It's yeah. Pokemon anime. That's how you. That's how they, they use their alphabet over there, <laughs> which I don't doubt it. What's the weirdest thing you've seen over there? There's some weird shit. Um, you know, like I was talking about the, the panties, then the vending machine. The, right, those are weird. Um, fuck, man, there's a lot of weird shit. It, it it's a it's a. It's a strange culture. <laughs> <laughs> it is just being honest. You know, they're so like uh oppressed or whatever, repressed and 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 but like they're so like deviant as well, like sexually mm-hmm. and like I don't know, it's just weird. You open up the the sports magazine and there's like just naked chicks for like no reason, like two pictures and then back to sports. Like, yeah, yeah. It's so strange. It's I so remember strange. being, I was on the bus and Tawe was in the front and he's just like casually reading a porno magazine the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like licking his finger, like going to the next page, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> just like Read it, reading the article. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> articles, but it like, it, it was as he was, like he was going left to right, like reading an article about this woman's nipples or whatever it may be. Um, and I just like it never stopped too and then you see that but that's that's not strange not man. weird it's, it's not for, for us i mean it's very strange but you know um i have a good uh kawada story okay so i, I have heat with kawada i don't know really, yeah I, that's the only guy that i really don't like and i'll tell you why because uh so one time I, I was over in japan and they extended my trip to do uh a tour for all japan I'll, and so for those of you who don't know kawada yeah. Right. I mean, he's a le- legend up he's, there with like Muda. Yeah, Masawa. He was he was like the top uh, all Japan guy for a number of years. So, um, super famous guy in Japan. And I, uh, so I, I had to do this like I guess with Amazing Red. Something happened. To Amazing Red and, he, and wasn't able to show up to make the tour. So they asked New Japan if they could for a junior, and they sent me. So I didn't know anybody or anything. So they dropped me off at the at the All Japan Dojo, and they told me, you know, just go up the street. There's the bus, and then it, you know we're we're going to the show. So um, I was like, fuck. I was thinking, man, I, I don't know anybody. I wish that somebody would come with me. You know, like this is one of those. Was there there was any was gaijin over there? Uh, no, this tour, no. For some reason, huh. there wasn't. Okay. So, so I'm, you know, I'm, I, I don't know anybody, and and I was thinking, man, fuck, you know, like. Obviously, I'm a wrestler because I'm, what the hell is this guy Jin doing here? But I mean, it's just kind of weird, you know. I never think like people can look at me like as like as a wrestler, you know. So I uh, anyway, so I, I walk up the street and I, I look on the bus and I kind of peek in. I don't see anybody. I'm like fucking sweet. Bus is empty. <laughs> I don't have to say hello to anybody. <laughs> That's not gonna be awkward. But as I step in in the first seat, up against the window is Kawada, and I was thinking, fuck. Of course, it's gonna be the biggest star of the company, mm-hmm. right? So I go up to him and I go to shake his hand. I say, hello, Mr. Kawada, my name is Araki. Nice to meet you. And as I do, I put out my, my hand and he just looks at me, looks me up and down and just goes, hmm, and just kind of fucking shoes me off. Doesn't say hello, doesn't say anything. It was so awkward. And I was like, and I, I literally looked at him. I go, okay. And I just, <laughs> and I just walked to the back of the bus. <laughs> I and like it's I just you my, two on the bus. It's just us. I put my headphones on and I was, and I was fucking fuming because I was like, what an asshole. Like, right. At the- one point. So on one extent of that, you realize I am a young boy. It's not my promotion, not <laughs> right. a young boy, but right. you were probably like tw- in your young, yeah, young I was 20s. Like 22 or something. Yeah. Right. And in the world of wrestling. Okay. I guess whatever. But like the other half is that like, feisty latino in you. <laughs> and like i'm a man fuck I'm this a motherfucking guy man right? you say hello to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> shake my hand yeah you know and then I, also hold on you, i know i know you replayed the scenario in your head you're like i should have uh, been like fuck you man i'm rocking like you shake my hand did you not like come on. i replayed that scenario like hundreds of times <laughs> And uh, it all ends up with with him just shooing me off anyway, so <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, um, Taiokea, who's who's 
was an all Japan mm-hmm. uh, gaijin wrestler from Hawaii. He Moss told me, man, yeah, Moss Man Monica. He was. He told me the same thing that Kawada was just an asshole to him for almost all his career, and then uh, and then I think once he retired, he ended up being like really cool with him. He'd invite him out to go drinking, like he'd just show up at his hotel. Ask for K. He's like, "Hey, you doing anything?" He was like, "No," and he's like, and he would take him out because he wasn't a threat anymore. How does that work? <laughs> he's a fucking weirdo. <laughs> weird, yeah. He's a weirdo. Hero and I went to his uh, ramen shop. Oh, was it any good? I didn't. I don't I eat. Go. I don't eat ramen. I know you wouldn't go. <laughs> um, but we had heard, you know, we had heard stories that like he wouldn't say hi to. The, he hates guy Gene. He wouldn't say hi right. to anyone, and uh, he was friendly to you know to Chris and. Um, you know, I was just kind of like, I don't know, I just waved, whatever, yeah. but like, Chris was very excited. I think it's one of Chris's heroes. Right, right. Uh, pun intended, no pun intended, <laughs> either way. <laughs> but, um, you know, now I think it's different that like, you know, he's not- Out of the business. And also, Chris is paying him, he's got to learn True. customer service now. Yeah, learn it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that's how a Yelp review, like, he's, he, you know, imagine he's like, oh, maybe Yelp review. Uh, I, I must be he nice to- scared of heroes Yelp review. Yeah, <laughs> must take awesome. picture. <laughs> There was no Yelp reviews in the <laughs> mid '90s when they were dropping fuckers on their head. Yeah, uh, that maybe that should be my ultimate revenge is write a bad Yelp Just, review. Hey, listen, <laughs> yeah. it's a thing. That's true. It's a thing. Ask That's them. Um, you've been, I guess, the list of guys, and also you, you, you did. That's interesting. You went to all Japan. You went to New Japan. You went to Noah for a second, then went mm-hmm. back to New Japan. Right. Um, in a time, I know it's less and less where these guys are trading around. Uh, Back in the day, you went to New Japan, to All Japan. It was right. very taboo, right? Right. Yeah, and if you went back and forth, I mean, it was a big deal, and uh, or if you switched to the other or whatever, I mean, it was it was a it was a huge deal. It was like going from WWF to WCW right. at that time, and uh, and now it, I mean, it's a little more rare. I mean, but when you went to happen. Noah, and then you, you went back to New Japan, mm-hmm. it still wasn't like. I don't think that's a thing that people really did that much. No, no. And then Noah didn't let me go back to New Japan. I would have went to New Japan before, but Noah put the cock block on. I'm kind of, I'm, yeah. well, I'm wondering like, like what you were thinking internally. Um, because that's always, I, I'm always intrigued how people think making these big moves. Cause we look back on it and maybe it wasn't a big deal or that was cool that you did it. But when you're in the moment, kind of like, Oh, uh, I, you know, and I talked to Kozlov about um, the AAA jump, and right. I, we might have talked about that last time. Uh, you went from which to which? I went from CMLL to AAA. CMLL. I was tri- the first one to go. The fir- right, and yeah. so which is a really, really big deal, huge deal. And I, I mean more psychologically. Oh man, I was so. I remember being just so. It was such a mind fuck. I was so nervous. I was thinking that fucking somebody might, you know, like shoot me or yeah, something. This you know? is Mexico. This is Mexico. Okay. Oh, okay. So, but uh, we're we talking about Japan. Huh? Um, or, I don't know. But I mean, so you did, you did this, you did two jumps. I mean, was that yeah. as much of a jump that from New Japan to Noah? Yeah. Noah well, to New see, Japan? New Japan, basically they told me like uh, Simon Inoki, who was the president at the time, basically told me that they were done using me. And uh, we had some kind of personal issues there and he, and he, just said no i'm done using you but he didn't tell the office why and liger was the booker at that time so liger was trying to book me but simon kept telling him no but he wouldn't tell him what any reason or anything so they were conf- the office was confused so i immediately made a call to to noah and uh and i was booked like within you know a couple of days after being let go i guess from new japan okay so how does that work uh, because like my fear would be like, oh, New Japan doesn't want me. I'm a failure. Nobody would want me. You know, see, that's why we're right, different. But right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I was so fucking pissed off at at, at Simon. At, you know, not really New Japan, but at Simon at that time, I was so pissed off and I was so hurt. So that I, I immediately said, well, fuck, fuck New Japan. I'm gonna fucking go to their rival, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I'll go to Noah, and I'll fucking. Did you, you know somebody at Noah? Uh, yeah, I knew uh, Ricky Marvin, and I knew uh, I actually called. I called Ricky Marvin first. Yeah. So, like, what's your move? You're like, so do you like, hey, like, I want to come, or you like, maybe you can ask, or you know, how does that business I, I, transaction? So I, yeah, work? I remember I was at PWG, and I and I and when I got the call, uh, Ricky called me back, and because I, I left him a message or something. And uh, and he called me back. He said, "I already talked to the office, and they they said they want you like the next tour." Okay, that's a great feeling. It was a, it was a really good feeling because I mean, for that week, I was so stressed out. You know, I don't know when you know my next major paycheck was going to be coming in, and then like, where do you go from there? You know, I, you know, I was like twenty five or something, twenty six, and I and I was Black Tiger in New Japan. I was 
you know, I was, I was a junior star, you know, and I didn't, I didn't know what the fuck was going to happen. It was, it was, I'd never been in that situation, uh, at all, you know, until, until, until that, so, until then. So when he called me and he told me, fuck, you know, they want you. I was like, oh, thank God, you know. And then I, I, my, my goal was to, you know, to show fucking New Japan, you know, what they're missing, you know. And it's, but essentially, I mean, it wasn't Liger because he loved you. But I didn't know that at the time. Uh, so I didn't know. You, any, you, fuck you to everyone. Yeah. And it was your mindset, yeah? Yeah, I was just like, fuck you to, yeah, fuck them all. And then, uh, but then the funny thing is, is I, when I, like uh, three weeks later, when I go to the tour, uh, Simon gets fired. Oh, wow. So I'm walking down the street in Shibuya. And uh, which where the New Japan office was, and I see one of the bookers. His name was Kawana, and he sees me, and and he's like, "Oh, Rocky, Rocky." He's like, "What happened? You know, what happened with why? Are, you know, why aren't you back in New Japan?" So I said, "Well, I, you know, I didn't want to leave, you know." And he and he said, "Well, we want you back." So this is while I'm on tour with Noah. So then I said, "Oh shit!" So oh shit! <laughs> yeah. So then I had to really think about it, you know. Like I just got here, you know. Can I jump back? So. Of course, I, you know, I went to the, I, I talked to the New Japan office and I said, look, if you guys want me back, you're going to have to pay me more. You know, I, I, like I went in there and I just made a bunch of demands mm -hmm. and they said, they said, okay to all of them. Wow. So then I was like, Fuck. it was one of the demands. Like, see, I, in, in my mind, I would be like, I want some kind of security almost. Right. 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 Was, was that like, you can't just use me for a tour and then say, fuck off again. Yeah. I, uh. I just, I I didn't think I didn't even think about that I don't think at the time, but what oh actually I think their their offer though was multiple they were gonna sign me for like a multiple tour or like a certain amount of tours per year type mm -hmm. thing, something like that actually I don't remember what it was I just remember that that the money was like and so then better. you had to say and sorry if you don't want to talk about this but then you kind of had to say like no like then you had to like run away from Noah then huh yeah which, see, is, which is and the thing was yeah and the thing is is Noah like a week before that Noah had asked me if I wanted to come back. Uh, like whatever they had already thought like another two or later or something and I had already said yes so when I went home and I actually worked out the details with New Japan I was like all right well fuck well, let me call Noah and tell them I'm not coming back so I called uh, Noah or Ken you know Ken I like it's just a guy named Noah <laughs> yeah. I called Noah I, that's my, usually my joke yeah, is like yeah. I'm on tour for like Noah <laughs> Fels, Felsen, Felsenthal or whatever like some Jewish guy in Japan <laughs> yeah, so I called Ken and I told him and he was pissed so then he called the office and and you know they told me that basically what I got what I heard after was Noah called New Japan and they basically said, hey, look, if you take Rocky, then we're going to come after uh, Giant Bernard and we're going to offer him more than what, you know, you guys are paying him now so that he'll come. So they, they kind of got into like a, like almost like a little dispute there for mm -hmm. a second. So New, New Japan got cold feet and they backed off. So then... But then it was weird because then I still had to go to Noah. So weird. It was, so it was so you a, did a weird tour? Oh, I did multiple weird tours. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that, everything ended up being all right. You know, they li actually, no, you know, they liked me over at Noah, and they actually used me a lot, and uh, probably even more than the the guys that were going there consistently for a couple of years. I mean, besides maybe like Bison. Uh, I was there maybe like, you know, five tours a year or something like that, four tours a year, which is good. Wow. You know? Were you, like, who were the, the Americans? Was like Bice, uh, not Bice, uh, Modest and Morgan, or they were gone? No, them? Modest and Morgan gone. It was Nigel, uh, Danielson, Bison, I think Doug, Fish, probably. Doug, yeah, okay. Doug. So yeah. a good crew. It was good, real good crew. Yeah. Real good, good crew. But it, it just wasn't the same coming from New Japan to Noah just because, like, backstage, everybody's so cool in new japan like they you know like the the japanese guys you know they take care of you you know they invite you to dinner you know if uh you know we're in some strange town they're just really cool mm. it's very light and then coming to noah which was very strict at the time i don't know if it still is but it's very old school yeah i, I was gonna say it's because you know that noah is based off of those all japan guys that all split who it was like always like really deep in that history of like right. um just everything like by the way, ancient Japanese way, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, it was, and it, which it was weird. It was so weird. Like, uh, to not, you know, like, or it seems like new Japan is just like a party. Yeah. New <laughs> Japan. Like I could walk into, into, you know, backstage and I see, you know, Yuji Nagata and he's fucking, you know, he's a happy to see me. And, you know, we just start joking like mm -hmm. right off the, where I come, you know, here and I see like, uh, 
you know, uh, Akiyama, Aki- Akiyama uh, right, at the right. time, you know, and he would just be like, you know, he wouldn't even say hello, mm-hmm. you know. So it was just weird. So uh, let's talk about this New Japan uh, resurgence before we, uh, I mean, there's whatever, we could talk about anything. But um, I, you're the first one I think I'm going to talk to about, but it's it's so interesting that, and I was talking about this with somebody else, that the idea that uh, Fergal or Finn or whatever the fuck, whatever, and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and Machine Gun, like they went into this system when it w- was kind of like, uh, it was what it was. It was just a promotion. And then they grew up with the promotion. And then it just happened to turn around and become the WWE of Japan. Right. Um, so it's not like they meant to, you know, it's just like they probably tried to get in any way. So you've essentially been around it since it was kind of low. I mean, was it not? It was, yeah, no, we were, it was the worst business they were. So the worst done. business <laughs> when ever. I, when I was the champion. <laughs> I think Makes I, sense. I won the belt at the Tokyo Dome. There was like. 8,000 people there or something like that, which is a lot. Which is pretty awesome. Right, yeah. right. But it's like, you know, Tokyo Dome has, you know, seats 70,000 people. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's nothing. And now, you know, like, you, you go to this this Dome show and there's 70,000 people, right? right. There's at least 50. Yeah. You know, so. Um, so, I mean, you saw the business turn around. You were in it while it turned around. Right. So you've seen the shit and, you've, and you've, uh, you can reap the benefits. Right. All the backstage politics, all the shit. I mean, I've seen the whole the whole growth Mm -hmm. you know and uh you know i'm glad to be a part of it now because fuck new japan's on fire right now i mean and it's like it's so on fire that the casual wrestling fan is starting to like kind of know what new japan right right where i feel as a wrestling fan myself and in the business for whatever 34 years now like we if i would just represent you know we know about muda and uh and maybe Liger, right? You know, <laughs> like and we only know about it too because they were, you know, in the NWA in America, or right? America, but now because of the internet, and it was especially because of the internet, and uh, and these guys that are uh, wrestling, you know, on, on TV, say, say for like Ring of Honor or PWG or 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 whatever uh, local indie, these are the same guys who are wrestling in Japan for New Japan as well. So you can see them. And you, you start to research them and you see that, holy shit, what the fuck is this really <laughs> cool New Japan Pro Wrestling product, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, the, all the guys over there are fucking awesome. What, what was the switch, though? What, like, what, what, you said there was politics to see how it grew. How it grew. Mm-hmm. What was it? I mean, how does that get done? So and how shitty was it? Like, I, it get, was the, I, I get the idea that there's 8,000 people, but like, right. what does that mean? They were, they were in like millions and millions of dollars in debt. And basically, they were they were on the verge of probably closing within a year or two. And what year was that? That was, uh, God, that was two thousand and seven. Okay, eight, seven or eight, yeah. And then I think in two thousand, so then they they completely, they got rid of all the people who were backstage, you know, in charge in the office, and uh, and the vice president basically started making really good decisions. He became the president, and he started he brought back uh, like Tiger Hattori to be in charge of the foreigners and kind of, you know, oversee things as a, as an advisor. And then uh, they, then he put Gato in charge, Gato and Jado. And then that's when everything changed because the booking changed and they actually started uh, building stars instead of, you know, just putting the old, older guys over it. Cause at that time the older guys would have all to say, they wouldn't do the job. And they would just say no, and nobody would tell them anything. Cause, and who's the older guys? Uh, Do you, I don't know if like Chono, them. Nagata. Uh, who, um, who else? Uh, maybe, you know, Tenzan, Kojima. Tenzan was cool about it. But, like, they didn't want to put, like, Nakamura over at the beginning of that. So, um, and they're, they're actually, Nakamura didn't have any friends because he was getting pushed at, like, 23 years old. And, and you know, he was the IWGP champion or whatever. So then when the, once Gato came in charge, then he started, like, then he started trimming the fat a little bit of the guys who didn't need to be there. And then the guys who, who were boring, basically he gave them gimmicks. <laughs> and and So give got, me an example of something that you saw somebody like get a gimmick and turn into something awesome. So Izuka. Do you know who, who Izuka is? He's like the crazy guy. He's like bald guy. Yes, he has, yeah. the, he has like the iron claw finger thing. Okay. Yeah, so that guy was the most boring fucking wrestler <laughs> in the world, dude. He would like come out and do like shoot style wrestling and, and like, you've got it you're sitting there in the in the arena just watching it being like 20 years bro <laughs> he did the same shit he basically was re- wrestling like the young boys for 20 years no character no nothing he gave him this gimmick and and he he said just told him to act like a uh, tiger jeet singh 
basically. And he now he's one of the most over guys in the fucking, you know, like he's a mid card guy, but he's super over. You yeah. Know? And, uh, he, and that's a complete turnaround. If you go to watch Izuka, you know, before 2010, I mean, you, you're, you're falling asleep. Yeah. You're going to sleep. You're, you're, you know, so, you're going to turn off the tape. For but sure. you can't, I mean, like even, so like, let's say you would relate it to like, uh, an ROH now, I guess, or I wouldn't want to say TNA because like maybe, I don't know, maybe they could easily turn it around, but like they were like ROH is like the world doesn't like uh, the, the hardcore wrestling fans all know about it. And mm -hmm. I guess that's how new Japan was. But now, I, I mean, I, I guess it, and what I'm saying is what well, it was money. Wasn't it like they just put a shitload of money back into it? Well, it, well was it not? I mean, well, smart booking, right? Yeah. The, the booking started to change things a little bit and they, they started to put Tanahashi and he started to, uh, he like the, the casual wrestling fans were into him. You know, so like casual people that, you know, he's a good looking guy or whatever, you know. And uh, so they, they started to, to get interested in him along with the booking. And then and then later came the money that that. So but it, it first started transitioning before. So it did start building money. up with just with better booking. Slowly, slowly. Yeah. Okay. Then then once they, they sold the company or uh, Ukes bought the company, then they started putting a little bit of money behind it. Not too much. And then finally, the last couple of years when they sold it to Bushy Road, now Bushy Road is really putting money. Because there's advertising on trains. And, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. that's how you and that's make big business. Two years, you know, that's only two years of that. Right. But they've, to see how much they've grown in two years is crazy, mm. you know. And do you, like, see any, like, cool benefits of that? Um, you know what? I mean... From now, you know, we now we're starting to see a little bit more residuals and you know things like that, and uh, which is cool. You know, they they just did um, the trading card stuff, so we get a little money for that, and you know, so little things. It's like not like that. nicer hotels or, uh, uh, or no, they're still pretty cheap with it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, I can't. You it's know, just I, bigger crowds and bigger, more respect. Huh? Exactly, yeah. it's bigger crowds and uh, and uh, you know. I, the accommodations aren't changing or anything, but that's, I don't, I don't mind. They, they were never bad though. Right. You know, so I, I they, and I guess if you want to look at it, I look at it when you say there were millions in debt, but you know what? And I look at this too, because I, you know, who knows what, how Noah's doing, but like wh how, whether their financials up and down, even if they're millions in debt, you were still getting a paycheck. You were still getting right. put in a hotel every night. Right. You were right. still, you know, getting sponsors and taken care of. And it wasn't like you weren't being asked to take any, any any pay cuts or right no no yeah no, so no. um all right well you're you're uh i want to i mean we're winding down here i want to uh you, you're so you're, much to talk about. so much to talk about you're in the podcast world <laughs> right yeah we're in the podcast world where uh i was told that you guys it's a 30 minutes it's 30 minutes on the dot smart Got to because we're, we're so you guys do the talk and shop with MLW, right? Right, we're yep. You find us on MLW radio. The show's called Talk and Shop. It's uh, Machine Gun, Carl Anderson, uh, Luke Gallows, and myself. And it's important that it's, I, I think it's important the 30 minutes. And like, I've there were some other podcast ideas that I want to start doing, and I might, I, I actually made a pilot, and I'm thinking about, I'm not sure when I'm going to put it out or if I could even handle the load of doing another one. Mm -hmm. But um, the more people now are starting to dive into podcasting, they're looking at the, uh, and I guess this is kind of, this is talking shop a little bit while we're on here, is, right. is they're looking at the model and they're seeing the one hour, one and a half hour, two hour thing. Right, right. And what happens is that, uh, you just don't have time. People don't have time to to, to do nine hours of audio a day or whatever. Right, right. So uh, if I can, if one of my podcast, like I have, I have about forty podcasts I listen to. Okay. None of them are wrestling. Right. But sometimes I love the idea when I see those twenty minute ones and those eighteen minute ones, and it's like I know I can listen to this. I know it's not going to take up my whole day. Exactly. I know I can get this done. I can listen to this and I drive just my drive to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, not even like exactly. I mean, is that the, the thought that, on that? That that was the thought. Of it. Like, I was thinking about like TV shows too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you know, you get a thirty minute sitcom, you know, or something like that. You know, and that's what. Now I was, that you're in the biz, yeah. Now uh, that I'm in the, <laughs> all the other industries, yes, happening. yes. And uh, you know, so I was thinking, yeah, what, you know, if we do it, why don't we do it thirty minutes? Plus, it's not going to, you know, because when we do them, well, we're on the road too. And we only have X amount of hours per day, you know, because usually we're at the building and we're traveling. Bullshit. What's that? Uh, there's been so many hours I've done <laughs> fuck all in Japan. Don't tell me that you're busy in Japan. We're pretty busy though. I mean, we, you know, we we 
we haven't been getting that many fucking days off to be really? honest. Yeah. I mean, I guess and we're... if we do, we're the travel days. So we have like six, seven hours on the bus, yeah. eight hours. Yeah, if business is booming. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know what you guys are doing there. No. <laughs> <laughs> just but uh, you know, so yeah, 30 minutes just made sense. And then this way we could, we were able to tape like one, you know, two shows at a time mm -hmm. and then, you know, not have to worry about it because we're, you know, when we're home, we're not, we're not recording them either, you know? So they're purely when we're done when we're on the road. So, all right. So, and yeah. uh, are you are you? Uh, I don't know. You you're setting up here. Um, I want to talk about something. I'll edit it if you don't want to talk about it. Okay. But you, you did a the, the tryout thingy. I did. I did. I don't want to talk about it. You don't. Nah. It's yeah. Good. Okay. It's all good. Yeah. I I, uh, I tried out for WWE. Oh, you wait. What? You said you don't want to talk about it. No, I do. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I thought you were right. I was I, ready to edit I, I that right thought, out. I kind of thought that you were going to ask that. <laughs> oh, yes, well, so. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just like, and especially with Fergal, what he's doing now, yeah. and the idea of these guys spend all their years, I think, in Japan, and like probably don't get any love from their home audiences. It's like, right. you're an American. You're Lo you're Los Angelito. Right. Uh, and this is this is where I'm at. Uh, in my career and personally how I feel is that I'm ready to I never really cared about like I said I never really cared about uh, you know too much about making it you know here in, in North America but now I you know that's really what I want to do you know I'm very interested in that and uh, yeah I tried out for WWE earlier this year uh, it was like me Steen Roderick Strong uh, Willie Mack I was with with that group and uh it was it was good you know i mean uh, to be honest it was it was a really positive experience i've never talked to wwe at all my whole career at all i never did a like a tryout match i never did like extra work never i did nothing i've been backstage once and that was only because uh new japan was going backstage and they asked me to come okay in That's, japan you mean uh no in it was here in la okay and there was like some people were, that were here from from new japan and uh and that's the first time i met regal so i mean i i've had no communication with them at all in like 15 years <laughs> so uh but, you know because i wasn't really interested you know and uh and i you know to pursue it that much and uh so yeah i i saw regal recently or um earlier this year and i i met uh canyon seaman and um yeah they invited me you know they said hey you know i know this probably isn't what you want to do, but would you, if you're interested and you have time and you, you know, between tours, we'd love to take a look at you. Would you come out to one of these uh, camps that they do? Well, I mean, when you say it that way, it's, it seems a little more respectful and nicer. It would, they would, to be honest, as opposed to like, yeah, yo, yeah. Yo, uh, maybe we'll we'll look at you know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, you know, like I've heard so many stories, you know, and everything, and they've been nothing but extremely respectful to me. Yeah, you know, the whole time, uh, you know, at the tryout, you know, I felt like they were, you know, they were saying really nice things, but you know, and kind of putting, you know, putting me over to the other guys who were there at the tryout who maybe didn't know who I was or you know the things that I've done. And, uh, and that's including all the coaches and everything. Super nice, super res respectful. So I had a really positive experience. Really positive. But I, I mean, you're not part but of I'm, the re-evolution, though. Right, right. But I'm not currently a part of the re-evolution. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't count it out still. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're definitely still talking. So Well, um, how, do you, how do you take that when you go into that? I mean, yeah. see, that's one of the hard things is, I mean, I think it's great that they, and I've talked about this, that they're giving all these guys... You you know as much as I you know let's think about ten years ago when we were doing the indie stuff right. you know uh, you, and everyone could barely get a foot in the door if you were an indie talent exactly a top indie talent now right. it seems like if you you know if you're on one show in front of five hundred people you're invited down to this uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not knocking you right, obviously right, but right, right. Uh, you know but so with all the guys going down there to get looks now which is amazing mm -hmm. um, now there's more guys that will get a hard rejection right and right. so. I think that's. I, I wonder. I guess it's the way you take it, and, and and starting off this thing, you you know, you're half full, half empty, right? Very half full, right? Um, but I feel that's a hard take, especially after 15 years, do, you know, dominating the Japan scene, wrestling in front of 7,000 people, mm. and then like they were like, uh, Steen debuts on TV, you know, and, and mm. Willie gets uh, a contract, you know, taken away, but uh, due to medical the whatever, offered. yeah, yeah. yeah. Does it weigh on you a little bit, or you're um, the mindset of just like I'm still New Japan and I'll get it eventually or or might come eventually or something will come eventually yeah yeah i mean i i still look at it i don't know what kind of opportunity will uh present itself it might not be as a wrestler 
you know, or, or, or something, at, or might not be an on-screen talent. It could be something else. It could be a pilot in NBC. It could uh, be a pilot in yeah. NBC or whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah, so I mean, uh, there's that initial, like, you're bummed a little bit, you know, when especially when you start hearing that people are getting offers. But um, at least, I, I, you know, I felt like, I think if I didn't have New Japan, maybe I might feel a little differently mm-hmm. too, though. Because now New Japan is doing stuff here in north america yeah they have a tv show i saw that on on uh access, access. yeah which is pretty awesome it's pretty cool yeah actually uh josh barnett is one of the uh announcers commentators on that a friend of yours yeah he's a friend of mine and he actually just called me the other day and he and he told me he just did uh he just commentated uh one of our matches me and kaza versus the bucks so oh, i didn't even know that was gonna be on that's there, so. that's great that's pretty cool you i hope you go to parties with tom green <laughs> as, <laughs> he, have a show as he is on access tv yes <laughs> oh, god i hope i get to meet tom yeah green. <laughs> well listen in a perfect world uh so yeah I, I mean i get it new japan and and i think actually just when you you know we have these perceptions all of us have these ideas of like we look at things and think of how people will think it but even right, right. now sitting on here when you said like they were like eh, you know may, you know we'll casually take a look at you and maybe something maybe not as right. opposed to like all eggs in one basket exactly. just didn't seem like for even exactly. for both you guys there right. were no eggs maybe right. if something clicked there'd be something but if not maybe something like yeah you know and, and i didn't make a big deal about it either though because I, I i saw that a lot of people were like uh you know posting about like oh i got this wwe drive. right and I, I don't i don't i don't want to do that because just in case it did come go completely and south. also it's just another thing in your thing yeah Listen, exactly. I'm touring. I'm going down yeah. there. I'm going you know, to the grocery yeah. store. I'm <laughs> NBC. It's all. It's just it's a just thing. A, it's just a thing. You yeah. know. I mean, it's another possible opportunity. And you know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, well, I know you weren't public about. Yeah. It. That's why I, I didn't know what to bring up. But I know I could just chop anything off. Yeah. No. I no. It's, it's all good. No. I don't yeah. mind talking about. It. I actually, uh, you know, I've been waiting for, uh, you know, something special to talk about it. Too, ah. you know? So this is the well, you're, platform. You're a special that. man. Yeah. No, you're a special. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Rocky, uh, finally on Twitter. Although it's probably been a year now, but you were, you were, rel- you were. Yeah, I was late it for a while. to the Twitter yeah, party. That's all right. So uh, what do we got? Uh, Azuka Rock. R uh, A Z U C A R R O C. You can find me on there, or you just type in Rocky Romero. Mm-hmm. I should pop up. You can find me on uh, Facebook, Rocky Romero as well. Okay. And um, you can visit my pro wrestling tea store, yes. pro wrestling tees slash Rocky Romero, or visit our Forever Hooligan store, which is pro wrestling tees slash Forever Hooligan. And is that the stuff? Um is that like designs from new, from Japan and stuff? Uh, yeah, we get well. Uh, no, we do our own designs. Okay. Yeah, we do our own stuff. Um, we uh, I've I've got a good friend who's uh, who's actually we met because he was a big fan of Black Tiger. Cool. An Italian buddy of mine. He's a rapper as well. And, um, oh, you do you have any of the eye patches for sale left or no? Uh, yeah, you can find those uh, at the shows when I'm doing the shows. But I need to get some of those on there. Online or wherever yeah. online. Yeah, yeah. because uh, your new thing is, and I, and I know uh, I saw you in G- Germany, and uh, Germany, England. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, Rocky, you just don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> is what happened. I was like, you me so yeah, <laughs> I was like, you've been around for so long. You've just like, it's, it's just like, oh, then that's when the best wrestling comes out is when you just <laughs> yeah. don't get, the guy's got a fur coat on. He's got a fucking uh, eye <laughs> patch on. <laughs> just it's like, throwing what? shit at the wall. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Just, everybody's like, oh, did something happen to your eye? Like, what, is there a storyline, man? I'm like, no, I needed something to sell. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> Every, you know, because everybody's got t-shirts, everybody. I mean, I know you have, you know, you have a bunch of tons. Well, of headbands is, you know, let's say, how about the head, thing. same thing. It's, it's right. like. Uh, it's not, an accessory. Yeah, an accessory that can also be uh, marketed, I guess. Right, right. Yeah. And I was looking for something that was going to be unique and different and, uh, you know, something that was kind of cool. Like, you know, I know as a fan, you know, I'm a fan. I, I, if somebody, you know, Brett Hitman Hart had those glasses. You mm-hmm. know? So I was thinking, oh, man, I can do that with an eye patch, you know, put an eye patch on some kids. Oh, you know? It's the lucky, <laughs> lucky half-sighted uh, <laughs> Japanese boy <laughs> with an eye patch. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thanks for being on. Uh, thanks for having me. It's go, go. All right, once again, watch Rocky Romero Access TV every single Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Very cool. Let him know that you're digging the program. Let Rocky know that you're digging him as a professional wrestler. Good podcast this week. Before we get out of here, let's get into some plugs and... Upcoming events! 
All right, the best way that you can support ColtMerger.com, DigitalColt.com. I got a Twitter and an Instagram at Colt Cabana. Colt Wrestling at gmail.com is my public email. Maybe you're a promoter and you want to put me on your upcoming show or convention. ColtCabana.com is where I get my P.O. box. Love getting me some snail mail. I Instagrammed a picture of what Tori uh, sent me. A cool painting of a quote about the happy bus. Of course, inspired by Lanny Poffo. Of course, how nice Randy Savage going into the Hall of Fame. And Facebook slash AOW Podcast and Colt Cabana. Upcoming January 16th through the 18th, this Friday through Sunday, Miami, Florida, MagicCityComicCon.com. I'm also doing live podcasts for the people there. I don't know if they're going to be crowded or not, but the guests are going to be crazy. Friday's at 6 o'clock, Saturday's at 3.45, Sunday is at noon. I think I'm going to bank those and put those out when I need to uh, release some podcasts, but they should be extremely fun. Tuesday and Wednesday, January 20th and 21st, Grand Rapids and Royal Oak, Michigan. I'm doing stand-up. These shows haven't sold out, but they're close to. Get some tickets. Come watch myself open for realmickfoley.com, which is the website. Friday, January 23rd, Pontiac, Michigan. Officer Colt Cabana comes to town in St. Cloud. Clownposse.com. Sunday, January 25th, Elwood, PA, outside of Pittsburgh, WrestleRumble.com. Saturday, January 31st, Winnipeg, Canada, tinyurl.com slash Primos Canada. Sunday, February 15th, London, England. All you guys out there in the UK, RevolutionProWrestling.com. Friday, February 21st, Cleveland, Ohio, AIWrestling.com. They just signed a big, big guest to come to the show. I'll tell you about it next week. Go to the website to find that out, though. Saturday, February 22nd, Rahway, New Jersey, ProWrestlingSyndicate.com. Also, they have television now. If you're in the New York area, DVR them, ProWrestlingSyndicate.com. February 28th to March 1st, Indianapolis, Indiana, another convention, CultureShockCon.com. Doing that, sitting next to my buddy Cliff Compton all weekend in Indianapolis, Indiana. All right, that is the show for this week. I want to thank you guys at home for listening. I always appreciate it. Thanks to Rocky Romero. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone, Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins on the music. Dane Miller for all your tech help. Let's thank a couple sponsors. Highspots.com. Hundreds of full-length titles available to download. Plus all the $5 wrestling titles, AMA knee pads, wrestling gear, wrestling mass, freight train documentary. Thanks to ProWrestlingTees.com and BarbershopWindow.com. The original alternative and independent wrestling shirt companies, both powered by One Hour Tees. Custom t-shirts made to your liking in an hour, a week, or whenever you need it. And TweakedAudio.com slash Colt, get them earbuds. I use them over 30% off and free shipping just because you listen to this show. Done for the week. Good job, Rocky. Good job, you at home. Please, if there's fans who say that they haven't gotten an episode since Christmas, the RSS feed all fucked up. Please tell them, let it be known. They just got to delete the podcast and re up it. A total headache for me, but uh, got to start over again, I guess. I appreciate you guys. You found it. You figure it out. You understand what's going on. My smart, smart, intelligent Jewish friends. All right. That's the show for this week. This has been The Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. <laughs>